the old river rested unruffled, spread out in the tranquil dignity of a waterway leading to the uttermost ends of the earth. When the novelist Joseph Conrad was writing those words, one power governed a quarter of the world's population and covered the same proportion of the Earth's land surface. From the mouth of the Thames to the Bay of Bengal, it ruled the waves of all the world's oceans. The British Empire was the biggest empire ever. What greatness had not floated on the ebb of that river into the mystery of an unknown earth? The dreams of men, the seed of commonwealths, the germs of empires. Thanks to the British Empire, I have relatives in Toronto, Alberta, Philadelphia and Perth, Australia. I even spent part of my childhood in Kenya. Nowadays, of course, the phrase British Empire conjures up images of chaps with stiff upper lips and pith helmets being waited on hand and foot by poor exploited natives. At best, it's a rather corny old joke. At worst, it's something we should say a collective sorry for. The Empire's sins tend to be better remembered than its achievements. Yet traveling the world today, you keep on encountering the living legacies of Britain's age of empire. It was British traders who united the world in a single capitalist economy, while British migration changed the face of whole continents. Protestant Christianity spread from Clapham to Cape Town. English became the world language. Western norms of law, order and government were exported too and parliamentary democracy became the yardstick by which all political systems are judged. These are the pillars of the modern world. And if you like the modern world, you can't deny its debt to the British Empire. Today we live in a world dominated by a single superpower, the United States. Indeed, it sometimes seems a little bit as if we've become part of the American Empire. Yet Britain was the world's superpower for more than two centuries, exerting even more power beyond her borders than the US does today. First-hand memories of the empire may be fading, but there's never been a better time to understand how Britain made the modern world.